So what is lightning? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it's the occurrence of a natural electrical discharge of very short duration and high voltage between a cloud and the ground or within a cloud, accompanied by a bright flash and typically also thunder. So what causes it? Lightning is typically produced in thunderstorms when liquid and ice particles above the freezing level collide. These build up large electrical fields in the clouds. Once these electrical fields become large enough, a giant spark occurs between them. The lightning spark can occur between clouds, between the cloud and air, or between the cloud and ground. However, a lightning bolt can come out of the side of a storm or a storm cloud and strike a location miles away, seemingly coming out of a clear blue sky. Here's a scientific explanation from the Discovery Channel. As this stepped leader gets close to the Earth, it has an extraordinary effect on objects on the ground. They respond to the strong electric field by growing positive streamers. These reach up anywhere between three and a few hundred feet above the ground, as seen in these rare photographs. Finally, when a stepped leader and a positive streamer meet, the electric charge can drain to Earth, resulting in the blinding flash of light we call lightning. What you just saw was the negative charges from the clouds, or step leaders, causing positive charges, or streamers, to reach toward the clouds from objects on the ground, and when they meet, that produces a lightning bolt. In the United States, there are about 25 million lightning flashes every year, more than 1,000 people get struck by lightning every year in the U.S. 10% of people hit by lightning are killed, while the remaining 90% often live with disabilities or medical conditions as a result of the strike. The odds of being struck by lightning in the U.S. in any one year is 1 in 700,000. The odds of being struck in your lifetime are only 1 in 3,000. Only floods cause more storm-related deaths in the U.S. than lightning. In an average year, lightning kills more people in the United States than tornadoes or hurricanes. Typically, lightning bolts can be up to five times hotter than the surface of the sun. That's around 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. To put this into perspective, a typical household current is 120 volts. With one flash of lightning, you could light a 100 watt incandescent light bulb for about three months. So what's the best defense against lightning? Avoid it. Preparedness and education are the single most important ways to achieve this and to reduce the risk of a lightning hazard. You can typically hear thunder from six to eight miles away, up to 10 miles away on a clear day with no background. In either case, you're still too close and in striking distance. So what do you do if you find yourself caught outdoors in a dangerous storm? Well, the first course of action is to take safe shelter immediately. If no safe shelter is available, get into a safety position. Your feet as close together as possible your head as low as possible without touching the ground. Cover your ears and crouch. Do not lay flat on the ground. This position minimizes your overall footprint and reduces the risk of being directly or indirectly struck by lightning. How else can you prepare yourself? Know before you go. Check the weather forecast before participating in any outdoor activities. If the forecast calls for thunderstorms, postpone your trip or activity, or make sure adequate safe shelter is readily available. You can also monitor lightning activity using lightning detection apps available on most handheld devices. Here's an example of one. If you don't have cell or internet access, you can use the following equation 
to determine how close you are from the last lightning strike. Lightning plus thunder divided by five equals the distance. In this example, 10 seconds would equal two miles. Remember, it doesn't matter how close or far it is. If you can hear it, you're still in striking distance. So what else should you know if you're caught in a lightning storm? First, avoid open structures or spaces. Porches, gazebos, baseball dugouts, sports arenas, golf courses, parks, or playgrounds. Avoid conductive structures. Trees, flagpoles, antennas, fences, concrete walls or floors. These all conduct electricity. Avoid water. Swimming pools, ponds, lakes, or beaches. Minimize any and all contact with water during a thunderstorm. Avoid connected equipment and appliances inside structures. Examples are computers, laptops, game systems, washers, dryers, and stoves. Avoid using corded telephones during a thunderstorm. This is not a safe practice. Cordless phones and mobile phones are still okay for use. Consider equipping your homes with whole house surge protectors to protect yourself, your systems, and other appliances that are not typically plugged into a surge protection power strip. Here's an example of what can occur inside a residence. This individual was seated approximately four feet away from their desk. A lightning bolt struck their internal residential wiring. While the victim only sustained minor injuries, the electrical components were destroyed. So how can you help a victim who's been struck by lightning? Remember the five R's. First, react. Call 911 immediately. Attempt to remain calm in order to give clear, concise directions to your location. You will also need to provide information about the number of victims and the nature of their injuries. It is safe to use your cell phone during these conditions. Next, respond. Assess the situation. Safety is always the priority. If the area where the victim and you are located are still a high risk area, attempt to move them to a safer location when it is reasonably safe for you to do so. It is unusual for a victim who survives a strike to have any major broken bones that would cause paralysis or any major bleeding. If the victim is not in a high risk area, avoid moving them and provide supportive care. Keep them warm, provide comfort and reassurance. The third R is recognize. Lightning often causes the heart to stop. Check to see if the victim is breathing or has a pulse. If they don't, the fourth R, resuscitate. Begin chest compressions immediately. Continue these resuscitation efforts until help arrives. And five, repeat steps two, three, and four. There you have it, the five R's. React, respond, recognize, resuscitate, and repeat. Finally, don't forget your pets. Thank you for your time.